So cheers, welcome to Inkscape. We are getting into the thick of it with uh, building a golf course at this point. I'm enjoying a nice IPA while I dump some Inkscape introduction, some knowledge on you. This is gonna be a very high level introduction to Inkscape. And then later we'll get into some more concepts that are specific to golf course building. So this is just gonna be Inkscape in general. So what is Inkscape and what does this freaking thing do for us? So first of all, Inkscape is a vector graphics editor. What does that mean? Well, there's really two kinds of editors here. We've got a raster editor and a vector editor. Raster is probably what you're typically used to. Have you ever noticed when you open up a photo on a computer, and if you zoom in really close, and you'll even see this on like a Google Maps, right? If you zoom in really close, it starts to get grainy and pixelated, like you see here on this S up here. So after you go, you go farther and farther in, it gets granulated, it gets pixelated, um, and you kind of lose, it's not you're, you're losing resolution, you're just zoomed in too far. However, in a vector graphics editor, we're not editing pixels, we're editing shapes. Like you can draw squares and it knows that a square is a square, no matter how far you zoom in on it, this is its border, it is very precise and it doesn't really come down to pixels as much as it is comes to defining that shape, where that shape is located, what its dimensions are. So that is an, a vector graphics editor. And that works really well for what we're gonna be using it for, which is we're gonna use a vector's graphics editor, Inkscape, to define the shapes that define our course. Those shapes being T-boxes. You know, T-boxes can be round, they can be square, fairways, which are kind of oblong, weird shapes, greens, which circles, roughs, deep rough, water bodies, bunkers. All these are, they're not usually perfect circles, they're kind of, you know, shapes. They're shapes in general, right? So we're gonna draw those shapes inside of Inkscape. Um, I'll show you an Inkscape example here in a second. But at the, at the end of this, what's, what are we gonna do, okay? Well, that Inkscape file, which is that all these shapes that I'm talking about, is gonna be exported and it's gonna be used for two different things. One is we're gonna create an overlay image for Unity to dig our terrain. So you've already created your LiDAR. Well, I'm assuming you created it. If you didn't, someone has given you LiDAR. And a LiDAR is essentially the terrain, okay, of our course, you know, the height of the different areas. But you don't really know yet. You really haven't defined yet. Is this area the green? Is this area T-box? Is this a bunker? Although the, the contours are there, we got to put, like, we have to define what those things are on our terrain. So what, one thing we're gonna do is we're gonna take this Inkscape file that we create, we're gonna bring in a Unity, and we're gonna put it on top of that terrain so that we can see how the bunkers line up. And maybe we need to dig our terrain a little bit more to get our bunkers a little bit deeper. Or maybe our T-boxes aren't quite flat as they should be from the terrain, from the LiDAR that we generated. So we need to flatten those out. So the Inkscape file in conjunction with the terrain that you created, combined together, put on top, one on top of the other, will help us dig and manipulate our terrain. More on that later. The second thing we're gonna use this for, and arguably the more important of the two, arguably, and I'll drink a beer because probably not the smart thing to say, is we're gonna create 3D meshes in Blender. I know you don't know what Blender is yet. You probably don't even know what a mesh is. You're gonna find out. But Inkscape, okay, is two-dimensional. We're just drawing shapes, okay? Think circles and squares, okay? More complex than that, but those are just two-dimensional shapes. But what we're gonna do is we're gonna take our terrain, we're gonna take these two-dimensional shapes that we, that we create in Inkscape, and we're gonna take those two-dimensional shapes and we're gonna mold them onto the terrain. Think about taking wrapping paper and wrapping a package, right? You bend it around that package. That's what we're gonna do in Blender. So that's the second thing that we're gonna do with our Inkscape shapes. So some more concepts here about Inkscape shapes. One thing you have to understand is that the shapes that you're creating, they determine the appearance and behavior of the ground in the game, the ground, okay? Nothing else but the ground, okay? So if you define a fairway, okay, that shape in Inkscape ultimately in, in Unity will define, okay, a fairway. Now, you could, if you wanted to, you could draw any shape in Inkscape and you can make it appear however you want in Unity later on. So just because you define something as a fairway in Inkscape doesn't mean that it has to look and, and perform like a fairway in Unity. You can change those principles. However, that entire area, okay, you defined a fairway in a shape 
that entire area has to be the same. It has to, for the most part, look the same, although that's changed quite a bit in V4, and it, but it is definitely gonna behave the same. That's the key thing to understand. So if you define one big giant shape, when a golf ball lands on it, if you define that shape as a bunker, that whole shape is gonna perform like a bunker, okay? can look like anything, but it's definitely going to perform like a bumper. Same thing if you define it as rough. So just to make sure that you understand, that's the key thing, is it defines the appearance and physics or behavior in the game. Shape hierarchy, shape order is extremely important. If you put one shape on top of the other, later on in Blender, that shape is going to cut through it. Okay, I'm going to show you that here in a second. It will make more sense. But the thing to understand is that shapes that are on top, okay, cut through shapes on the bottom. And that gets very important when we talk later on about things about blends, okay? The shape at the very bottom, of course, then gets cut by any shapes above it. And you can stack these up. You can have five or six shapes high, and then they're going to cut progressively down to the shape on the bottom. Pretty easy concept, right? You can organize your shapes in many different ways. You can group them into folders inside of Inkscape. I'll show you that in a second. I personally like to do that. It keeps things straight in my head. It makes it easier to troubleshoot. Some people just like to put all their shapes in a single flat you know, hierarchy and whatever's on top cuts through everything underneath it. I personally like to divide it into folders. I'm gonna show you how to use folders. You don't have to do it that way, wherever you want. You can also rename your shapes. So by default, when you create a shape, it's just gonna be called path inside of Inkscape. However, you can rename that to green number one, which maybe is what the green on hole number one stands for. I personally think that's a waste of time. <laughs> um, I wouldn't recommend doing it. I, um, but if it's something that you are meticulous about and you want to do, have at it. You're welcome to do that. So let me show you what something, an Inkscape, completed Inkscape. This is a Hershey Country Club, which I am about three quarters of the way done at this point. But this is the completed and finished Inkscape file. So let's see. Let me show you what you're looking at here. So. I know the colors look absolutely horrible, but you, you'll, this will make sense later on. What you really need to understand, though, is that on the very bottom of here are, is my overlay, my satellite overlay, which is what I use as kind of a reference to draw my shapes. So I'm going to show you this here. Let me turn off a couple layers here. And you can see as I turn off this later, I'm going to start zooming in. I think I'm going to start zooming in. There we go. And let me even turn off, I know that this is whole, I think this is whole one. Let's see, where's my whole one? And this is exactly why, I'll show you here, I put things in folders, 51. So this is, uh, first of all, let me tell you, this is a 36 uh, hole course. There's two 18 holes. So that's why it looks well, very busy because it's an 18, 36 hole course. But if I turn off the, these couple holes here, you can see that in my satellite, I can see where the fairways are. I can see where the bunkers are. I can see where the greens. T boxes are over here. And let me just turn this back on. You can see what I did here is I traced out my fairway, which is this green color. I've got a green over here. I've got my bunkers. This is some pine straw area. I have my cart paths. Okay. But the thing is, if I, as I zoom in here closer, you can see that I also have a semi rough here. Right, which is so here's my fairway, this light green, and the dark green is a semi rough. Now, what's important to see here, if I turn off my fairway, which is this shape right here, look underneath it. My semi rough is another complete shape underneath it. They're just two shapes stacked on top of each other. However, later on in Blender, that fairway, the light green, is going to cut through my semi rough, leaving more or less a big giant strip around the outside versus right now, which is a big giant solid shape. So that's why order is so important. Some other places where, for instance, here's my water. I did some tricky stuff here to get the particular look I'm looking for. So there's this other shape around the outside. The key thing here is colors are just used to distinguish separate shapes here. Ultimately, that's not what they're going to look like. However, if I have something like this, like pine straw, this entire area will get a texture in Unity, and it'll also get a physics attribute called pine straw. Um, this whole area will have to behave the same. 
I can change it later on to something other than pine straw. I can make it a bunker. I'm, when I'm, what I mean, I say I can make it perform like a bunker. I can make it perform like sand. I can make anything I want. And just because these three colors are the same, I can change them to other things inside of Unity. I can change how they look. However, this entire area will be consistent inside of Unity in that it will get the same texture and it'll get the same physics, although it can be different from these ones. But I cannot divide this in half in Unity and say, oh, I want the, the upper half of this to be a bunker. I want the lower half of this to behave like rough. Can't do that. Now, as far as how it looks, there's certain things that you can do. But for the most part, you just want to keep areas consistent. OK. So um, that is, oh, some organizational things here. I talked about folders. So just to let you know, in Inkscape, I have a ton of folders. You can see I have a whole 98. Now, my whole night that's an old concept. And to me, whole 98 is something that is, are my things that are on the very top. So you can see I'm turning off whole 98 here. I'm, I'm blinking it off. And you can see there's a row down here that I put on 98. And as I go down through this list, I can turn folders on and off, which really helps me kind of troubleshoot. So if I want to know where this whole 8 is, I can sit here and turn it on and off. Now I'm zoomed in too far for you guys to see where hole eight is. Let's try this again. See hole eight is, you can see it's blinking right up here. Now, so I organized shapes. Now I put these and I labeled these holes. You can label these folders. And if I open this folder up, I can see all these paths underneath here. So these paths are the individual shapes, like I mentioned before. You can see that this one is all the way down here. Here's this path, which is a T box. Um, I put these under folders. You can name these folders anything you want. OK, that is something that is actually new in V4 that you can rename those folders. It used to be a specific naming nomenclature that is now gone. So you can name these anything you want. You don't even have to use folders if you don't want. You could put everything under, under one folder and make this a big giant list. I personally don't like to do that. I like to organize things. I got my satellite images all the way here in the bottom. If you can see, if I turn those off, my satellite images disappear. Um, I have another one here. If that are, you'll see this in a second, which is my cart paths. I put all my cart paths in one layer. And obviously, my cart paths are going to cut through just about anything for the most part. So you can see that my cart paths are pretty high up in this hierarchy. There are some exceptions. And you'll see that order is very important, which I explained already. OK, so this video is already going too long. I've blabbed on long enough, and I need to finish my beer. See you.